Hello and welcome to the um, 20th anniversary Sathera live stream. This Hello, is quite a major anniversary for us. The, uh, I'm very thrilled, so thank you for joining us, anybody who is here. Uh, we're still working out some minor audio issues. Is Hopefully we're not getting too major a feedback. Us, Just let us know in the chat if you're hearing anything too loud. Uh, we're trying to uh, minimize that. All right, I am your host, Wizard, the administrator of Sathera Guides, and joining me we have... Um, a few really great people in the Sathera community. We have 
Sathira is a resident expert on all things, literally a master on all topics, which will be Palace Athene. And we also have the master Sathira Hacker. He uh, wrote the book on save file hacking and then later Delve Mod, Bryce Schroeder. So thank you so much, guys, for joining. And I would be remiss if I didn't also thank all the people on the Sathira community who are not um, on the chat, but who will be watching along and, and maybe in the comments as we go. And we're trying to, to sort out some issues, but I want to go ahead and get started for you guys. Basically what we're going to be doing, to give you an idea, we're just going to be sitting and playing the game, talking about it for a couple hours. For logistic reasons, I will be doing most of the gameplay, which is great because I won't be doing as much of the chatting. You'll get to hear from the wonderful <laughs> co-commentators who are helping me. And uh, we'll just be you know, talking about different aspects, looking at some of the quests and the things that made this game a lot of fun. So I hope everybody enjoys that. And um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and boot up the game without further ado. Now, you guys, uh, you guys are both on the audio stream, right? You can hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Uh, it's cut. I'm you can assuming that your bandwidth is getting taken over by the uh, actual video streaming. I'm going to make a new game here. Hopefully the audio isn't too stuttery. All right, so um, this game was written in, uh, oh, kind of the mid to late 90s, and it was released in 1999 by Ambrosia Software. Uh, Gwen Andres is the author of the game. He's the one who wrote Sathira, the scenario, and the Delver engine, the runtime engine that runs the game. And it's, it's a pretty special Mac RPG. It's Mac exclusive, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. The world that this is built on is so interactive, and we'll try to show some of those things that you can do. You can cook and uh, put things on food and um, you know, put buckets of water into uh, other objects, and it's, it's really quite well done, and you get a lot of freedom. So you start that freedom outright at the very beginning when you make this new character. And I'm just going to make a... Um, I think I'll do an Explorer, because this is like a good general class. This guy, this guy has kind of like a level of training in all of the, the arts, the magics, and the defense, and the fighting. And the premise here is that we were a modern day guy who... There's a storm outside, and something kind of draws our attention, and suddenly before we know it, we're kind of swept away into this darkness, and we wake up with these people talking around us, and that's where the game launches us in, but I won't bother to read all of this. I want to say another thing that's really remarkable about Sithra is how good the interface is. Uh, the interface is extremely Mac-like. Uh, unfortunately, that ended up meaning kind of very tight integration with classic Mac OS, but uh, it's really an impressive uh, interface, very usable, especially if you compare it to uh, PC RPGs that they might find antecedents in, antecedents in like uh, Ultima. Yeah, those are really good points. It is... Um reminiscent of those types of interfaces, but really an amazing thing. Okay, so this is Alaric, he's the Land King. I kind of breezed through his introduction as I, I typically would, but the idea is that this guy is the king of the land of Sathira, and he's the one who summoned us here to help him. Yeah, so he's the keeper of the land, and he says, oh yes, I'm, I'm Alaric. Okay, yeah, I'm told we're getting a little bit of feedback on your microphone there, Palace. All right, so... I've almost not been speaking at all, so... Oh, oh, it's Bryce's mic. Sorry. I think, um... I think looks okay, right. um... Is... Is this, um... We're getting a bit of a squeak. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a squeak. Okay, it's not the, yes. the parrot in the background, right? Oh, it probably is your parrot. Yeah. All right, so here... 
we're about to uh, let me put her let me put her downstairs I'll be right back okay no problem there we go all right so we we met them we got tasked with this idea come here Ruby hmm. come on uh, 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 we're going downstairs that's a good part yeah, we're, we're having a plethora of microphone issues. This is the problem with doing things live. <laughs> so we have um, the the author of Sathira, actually, Glenn Andres, is present on the live stream, but we're having a lot of difficulty uh, getting him able to speak on here. So we'll try to get that sorted out. All right, so what happened was uh, this vision appeared in front of us, and it pulled us into this place we don't know. So now we're just thrust into this little uh, side quest, I guess you could call it, but we know from the heading it's called Omen's Test. So it's going to be this this test that this being is putting us through to decide if we're uh, able to do the task that is set before us. Let me change In the game settings. terms, I guess I'd, I'd call it a tutorial, right? Yeah, in general game terms, I think you could say this is the game tutorial. But it has a narrative explanation. It is very much a tutorial, I think. Um, it's one of the last uh, levels by uh, the order that they're in the data file. So I think it's probably added on um, relatively late, but I don't know if uh, Glenn can confirm that or not. Now, um, I just want to point out some of the things going on here. You can have multiple windows open, kind of these different viewports, like this is the chest, this is my character, and you can move things between them. So it's all drag and drop. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that. And you can look at things in further detail. So, for instance, this is a note telling me that yeah, the key is not in this chest. Because if I try to operate this uh, trap door, it tells me it's locked. So we're going to have to search. Now this note tells us take a closer look at the wall here. And sure enough, there is a secret door. And veterans of the game would be horrified if I didn't also point out there's another secret door, which you get a, a nice little congratulatory note for finding. So, yeah, I'm just going to kind of do the tutorial. See, it shows off some of the game mechanics pretty well. So you're told to kind of look around the room, and, and the only thing in there is that torch, so you can examine it. Okay, so now that we have a key, I can use that to unlock the door. So this is kind of what I was talking about, how you can uh, combine all these different elements. You can use the key on the trap door to get the lock open. Ah, I uh, see Glenn is unmuted now. Hello? I don't know if we can hear him yet. Alright, so let's check. Um, I won't go into too much detail on the tutorial, it's just explaining how different items work. Like, this is a bomb. So you can light it. You can throw it, and then the bomb can be used to blast open the door, for instance. And you can drag and drop crates. Well, I guess I shouldn't do it in that order. Uh, uh, what are you seeing is a little bit... There? What was that? Seeing delayed audio, but, uh, you know, you, there, there's unlocked doors, obviously, and there's locked, but then there's the mage locked ones that you... Either you need a bomb or something heavy like that, or uh, you need to get the secret spell to... I guess there's no way to deal with a portcullis, is there? No, I don't believe so. I think you always have to use the lever. Yeah, so in the next thing here, that lever is what we're trying to get to, but we keep getting teleported around in here. I kind of know the teleportation order, so it's not too mysterious. Okay, so here we are, um, finishing the test. Yes, that's right. On the chat, it was commented that you can fetch a portcullis away. Which is a bug with um, one of the spells. But when you have this many uh, technical layers, bugs do tend to sneak in a bit. Alright, so we finished the tutorial, and now we are free to kind of roam around the, the game and see more about what's going on. So we have a nice setup in our quarters here. We have um, a map of the land. I'm going to go ahead and take that. We can look inside here. And we have different scrolls here for different spells. So 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and take. Uh, I'll go ahead and take each of these. Why not? Are you going for the extra bombs for this run? That's something I only found out about like a week ago that you could. Uh... Oh, from Lion King Hall's armor. Uh. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, we can. I'm not gonna like run the through the whole game. We we had a frenzy of Sethira speedruns this week, and we showed that you can pretty much finish the game in half an hour if you really want to. But we'll go at a um, a middle pace, I'd say. But yeah, it's true. Like the armory in here is a really good place to get equipped with things from the get-go. So let's just use this uh, Death Strike to eradicate anything. That's a very powerful spell. And so we can use this to pick up more bombs. Because bombs are also really useful. They're not a spell, but they're useful. Well, that's and... interesting. I had never actually tried Death Strike on an inanimate object before. Uh, I wonder if that's uh, a bug or if it's supposed to be like that. Um, I don't know. I think it works on pretty much everything, but that is a good point. It could be uh, unintentional. All right, here's our first other person. So you can see the dialogue engine here. You get prompted with a few kind of baseline name, job, that type of thing. But you can also input free text. So for instance, I can ask uh, Hector here if he wants to join me, and he'll say, uh, but you have to check with my father, but I'd love to do that. And then, you know, we can click that or type in Father, and it will tell us that he's the head of the guard. So let's go up to the throne room, and let's talk with Adrian. So he's the father of Hector. So if we just ask him about, I think he responds to Hector or son. And we've been, um, now we have this prompt that he can join us. So you see a little bit of dialogue switching here. Really interactive scripting. He can train us in different things. I'm going to go ahead and train in defense. Why not? And he asks us to put flowers on his mother's grave. So we'll do that. Talk with Alaric again. No, there's really nothing needed to learn from Alaric at this point. So let's grab Hector. We're going to ask him again, and he's happy to come along. Okay, let's just explore a tiny bit more so people can kind of see. These maps are also on Sphere Guides, but it's a whole different thing to explore in the game because you get the dynamic lighting and you get all the music and things. That and the interactive characters. And like the room descriptions, down here you see I'm getting descriptions about the rooms. Let's grab a couple potions. Like this is a um, potion of healing. So I'll take that, maybe. And I took the fire resistance potion. Here. This is a nice way to get an endless source of food. You can always ask for food or just cook things. Now, uh, you don't get high-ranked food items. If you go look at the food ranking, these are pretty low. They won't fill you that much. But they're free and easy to get. You can also actually learn to cook. So let me show you that process. You take, um, let's see, which one has water? Oh, that one has water, yeah. So we take flour and put some of that on the ground. And we put water with the flour. And now we have this dough. I'm gonna put the dough on the counter here. There we go. And use the rolling pin on it. And now I can just toss that in the stove and it says you baked it. So now you have hand-baked bread. Alright, let's explore the outside. So that's Omen. Omen does kind of play this tutorial type character for us. He'll pop up and tell us things to do as we go. So the first time you go out, he says, ah, you're venturing into the world. You might want to look into um, events going on in Odemia and Catamarca, basically. So let's just go into this. 
town here. If you uh, head out without picking up Hector as a party member first, he'll be... You, maybe you should go back and talk to that Hector guy. Yeah, he'll prompt you. And that's why he's, he's like a good tutorial character. He'll prompt you to make sure that you're getting that stuff done. Because it can be a hard game to do if you don't have help. I don't know if it is impossible by any means. Yeah, so we've been I'm told looking that at the... oh. there's a kidnapping here that we're going to have to go help. Help rescue someone. I guess when you uh, exam or when you um, look at the description for Death Strike, it says the spell causes grievous harm of whatever you touch. So uh, maybe it is supposed to work on inanimate objects. Yeah, I think that boxes and things would count as whatever you touch. Uh, are you guys finding the voice uh, on the live stream a little bit low? Let me see if I can amp that up. Okay, how's that? Why don't we have, um... Could one of you guys speak and we'll see if we're hearing anything? All right, I'm saying something now. I, I turned the volume up, so hopefully you're a little bit more present on the stream. That is not going well. So that is where Ariadne is being held. It's a farmhouse. Uh, you didn't by put on the uh, amulet, did you? I just put the amulet on now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you're right. Uh, if you die without wearing the amulet, then um, you have to go back to save. The amulet is like your extra lives. It will regenerate you. Yeah. And it, probably most people are familiar with that part of the terminology. Okay, I need to. I'm being told I need to turn the commentators up a little bit more. I'm going to try that. It's a balancing act uh, to balance all these different audio streams. Okay, so one advantage to having Alaric so nearby is that he will heal us. So, go back and got some healing. still having audio connection issues for um, Glenn. I'm trying to figure out um, how we'll fix that. Could be a microphone issue that he's having. take on these ruffians again. You actually can fight the ruffians pretty early on with Hector's help. Hector's like a tank. You just have to be able to start fighting. Well, not having so much luck with these ruffians. I think most of them are dead at this point. And the interesting thing about this quest is that the ruffians don't really respawn. So as you get to you can come back and deal with more of them later. And there's only one leader that you have to kill. There is, of course, a shareware game, so, you know, you were able to play at a certain point, but some of the features would always be locked off from you if you hadn't yet registered. Um, help, I think, from Alaric is one of the ones that was locked off, so if you were uh, not yet registered, then the ruffian fight, I guess, would have been a bit more difficult for you. Yeah, I also remember it that way as well.
I see you're using the PowerPC version here. I can tell because the uh, the trees are ruffling back and forth in the breeze. They don't do that on the 68K version of the Yeah, game. and the other thing too is um, if you look at the preferences, there's some things like live dragging and zoom rex that are available in the PowerPC build. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the uh, motion filters and things. Could be an issue with the uh, platform. Okay, so there's only one roughly. Hunter should be able to deal with them. So this guy's not giving us much to go on. But as soon as we attack him, Hector realizes he's going to Oh no. Boy, Eudoxus is really tough. There we go. That was close. So, just like anything else you can examine, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, key. There's a note in here. Kidnapping successful, will ransom. Or will some ransom. And then there's a coffer full of uh, these little vials here. There's a tint of the plot there. Yeah, it's part of the... Let's see, I can try to use these, can I? Yeah, you uncork it, but you get a sense of wrongness that prevents you from taking the taste. Let me put the chest in the Hector's inventory. Now, I need to make sure to avoid the spikes or anything down. That's a, he's got some pungent, too. Uh, might be handy. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Let me use some of that. Because we have, like, three health points on Hector here and four of us. <laughs> So this ungent, uh, I can use it to heal a tiny bit. They don't have very many doses, but it's like a quick way to heal a point or two. Okay, so there's a trap door here. We'll use that key that we got off the body. Let's rescue her yet. So now she is in our party, and she'll follow us. Back to, uh, now, Bryce, um, just regarding mm -hmm. the audio issues, if you're on the browser, uh, did you have to set Safari preferences to allow the microphone usage? It, it may be a uh, I'm using Firefox, but I did have to tell it to allow the microphone. It, uh, it prompted me. and okay. uh, yeah, yeah, it could be a permissions issue going on. Right. So they recognize we have brought Ariadne back. Of course, there's no obligation to immediately head back. You can just pretend she's a party member for a while, but I, don't, I think she's not that useful. It's a bit unwise because she's pretty weak. Yeah, she'll die pretty fast in any confrontation. So this guy is Philonus. He's the one who um, runs House Nicander, and his wife is the one who is kidnapped. So you can see here, it's a pretty complicated world, actually. I mean, we've only been to, like, one town, and... Um, the home of Eller, and already there's so many characters and it's so immersive. So, uh, speaking along those lines, uh, Odemia is actually probably my favorite uh, zone in, or town, or whatever you want to call it, in Cythera, because it's kind of like a technical sampler of what the engine can do. It has a lot of uh, features that are used that uh, aren't particularly used elsewhere, but uh, show up here. I wish I could remember more of them offhand, but if you look at some of the routines that the NPCs uh, execute with uh, crafting and opening shutters and things like that, uh, they get tested out here kind of as a as you of what the engine can do. Yeah, well, and for instance, I mean, you can talk to these different vendors, and uh, Ake is a good example, Hebe is a good example. You can buy and sell, so, uh, for instance, if I picked up some flax from the farm, I could sell that to Hebe, and then I can also buy thread or cloth from Ake. So, you can do a lot of things. You can also actually learn to uh, make your own clothing and cloth from thread. So it's just one of the many skills that can be taught to your character. So these houses don't really have anyone in them right now. 
the, that's another interesting thing. Every character kind of has their own schedule. So they aren't always in their house just sitting there. They're kind of running around doing things throughout the day. Let's talk to this fellow here. Yeah, the captain of the guard is thanking us for bringing Ariadne back. The structure of Sathira's politics is kind of interesting. Basically, you have the houses, which are the, the power centers for, like, the people, and then you have the judges, who are the magic users that help enforce that system. And the whole dialogue with Sekis just discusses that those elements of their powers. Most saliently, they can tell if people are lying or telling the truth uh, with their magic, so... As you can imagine, that's very helpful uh, to uh, the legal system. I'm seeing a little bit of um, audio activity on uh, Gendry's end, but I'm not sure if it's coming through yet. Yeah, okay, he's going to pop up on the Twitch chat, given that we're not getting that audio through. Okay, and you notice what happened there with that exchange is that because their size was in range, it automatically um, recognized his presence, and I had a, a joint conversation with Sekis and their sides about getting the, the key to go to the jail and talk to this person. It's another uh, aspect of the setting that is somewhat unusual is that it's uh, set in a, a Greek-inspired environment. I think uh, early Iron Age, I guess, is what it sort of corresponds to. I guess, yeah. I, have, I, guess I have perceived it as being kind of uh, maybe late Bronze Age, kind of Aegean world, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely got uh, a lot of inspiration from uh, that classical mythology for sure, and it makes it more unique than just kind of the uh, bog standard fantasy setting. Mm. I say uh, early Iron Age because, of course, the iron mine is a like a critical location during later in the plot, where you know because point. one house controls the iron mine, that's like a. a um, they also uh, they also make um, make their money from from iron. If I remember correctly, in the mint. So I just did a quick chat with the bandit there who said um, that we're messing with more powerful people than, than us. I want to make this quick note. If you look at my health, my health is healing quite well, and Hector's isn't. That's because I'm wearing that ring that Omen gave me. That gives you a bit of a, a regeneration bonus. So Hector is suffering from lack of regeneration bonus. You're not going to share the, the ring. Yeah. Even once I'm, I'm healed, I'm going to keep it. So this is a really interesting plot, because we have, we're thrust into this land here where the, the king needs help, is all we know. And then as soon as we start to venture out of the world, we find out other stuff that is just going wrong, left and right. And one of them comes up right here where the, the judge is saying she can't actually tell if this bandit is lying to her or not, which completely undermines the basis of the judge's power. So it's kind of a scary thing for them. So she asks us to look into that further. And all these side quests, they really tie together into the main line. They're not necessary to be done. Like, the mission she just sent us on doesn't have to be done, but it, it will tie into the main one. I think I'm going to do that. Um, you can sell flax for profit, and I'm going to go to the farmhouse and grab some flax. A 
So uh, Glenn says that it's uh, the end of the Bronze uh, or early Iron Age. So I guess we're we're both right or both wrong, even though you look at it. <laughs> yeah, this will show off a little bit about the game engine, and I'm also going to use it to get uh, another follower. So she says you want some uh, to sell some flax, and she'll uh, take flax bundles for ten apiece. Now, if I had a skill called haggling, I could have gotten a little bit more for that, but I don't have that, because the Explorer just has kind of base aptitudes. But that's enough for me, because I now have 70 Obel. I just have to say, I, I feel like the world building in Cythera is really high quality, um, especially if you uh, compare it to... Again, my, my stock comparison here is going to be to the Ultima series because it kind of you know kind of looks like it in, in many ways has similar uh, ambitions in terms of engine capabilities to the early '90s Ultima games. But the world building is really well thought out and consistent. Uh, they, you know, it's, it, it covers how magic works and uh, how the, the even the uh, biology of the island is different from uh, Earth because the uh, the people on this island uh, came to the humans, I should say, uh, not all of the people, but the humans on this island came from outside. Uh, but the native life has uh, six legs, so I don't know if we've seen any any yet. I guess we haven't seen any yet, but uh, when we see some of the uh, native animals that aren't magical, we'll see that they're all reptilian hexapods almost. Yeah, I'm having to backtrack because I forgot my money. Oh, I was wondering why you didn't take it, but I was yeah. like, I didn't question it at the time. <laughs> also, I, don't have any shoes. That's true. Yeah. Well, you know, I've I've been so um, so much on the speed run bent that I just forgot about grabbing the money. Because when you speed run, Maliger is not that helpful. Hector really pulls his weight. Maliger is a help if you can get him, but he's not quite. Helpful. It's like we're getting into the night part of the day-night cycle as well. Yeah, so you're noticing the dynamic light there is starting a little bit darker. Yes. Maligar probably is just waiting on the bridge day and night, but everyone else is probably going to be in bed soon. you get like an experience reward for that, but you do get karma points. Let's go ahead and try that. You would kind of just have to spend your time exploring if you weren't familiar with the game. But no reason not to go ahead and explore to the underground where yeah. we'll meet up there. The mini-map uh, in the lower left makes it... There's some uh, 
point on the map where you can't actually get to the a location. But of course, if you're just walking around the map normally, then the engine will do occlusion and close and open and like it's not quite so easy to see that there's some hidden place that you haven't been able to get into. Yeah, you kind of get a nudge that there's a gap there. Alright, so, um, we bought those ugly green things. Well, more accurately. Uh, assistance did. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And we get this feeling of sick sickness when we pick up this green crystal. So now we have this glowing crystal. And this is where the plot starts to come together. Um, Omen just popped up and said that we picked up the first part of the coma. I actually picked through a bit of that. I wanted to show something. But he says you just have one part, so look for more of it. Another thing that I find interesting in the game is the languages, because, as I said before, um, of course, most of the stuff is Greek. Um, then Alaric, that name is Germanic, so it's sort of separate. Um, characters later who I think are named after Transformers but the Krolna, that word, I, I have no idea where it comes from. If you search for it online, the, the top results will actually be for Scythera so uh, it seems to be a completely original coinage not really related to anything. Okay, I'm told the music is a little loud. I'm gonna adjust that volume a little bit. Uh, yeah, looking at the uh, code here, um, you're right. Uh, the uh, completing the uh, putting the flowers on the grave quest gives you five karma. Yeah, I think that's uh, but a I, karma point. Yeah, yeah, I don't see any XP reward in there. Okay, I tweaked the sound a little bit. Hopefully, the voices are a little bit louder and the audio a little quiet. So there's a lady earlier who was saying he must not die. You can also turn the blind down to the system. There we go, maybe that's a good bell. So now he's not in bed up there anymore. Recovery? Yeah. Actually, he might be down in uh, Mitopi's house. There he is. Well, I thought he was. In or, I think there's an inn in, in uh, here as well, right? Is the there, there is an inn, yeah, let's go explore the inn. That was uh, one actually, of my fun um, picks in the second Another interesting thing is a kind of a community meeting room. There it is. Yeah, so this is um, the one who was on his deathbed. This is uh, the unpatched data file then, because I see that uh, you have uh, two people trying to sit on top of each other uh, at one table with three empty chairs. Yes, this is the unpatched one. Um, I, I have the patched one. I can switch over to it if we need to. But yeah, Bryce has a wonderful patch that fixes the um, these two guys sitting on the same chair. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of plot development after carrying the plague. What we're being told is that uh, the judge is telling us that those creatures were kind of uh, creatures of legend, and we might want to check out more around like the, the creatures of legend, like the Metics. And then um, Propontus up here was pointing out that Darius did not get sick, so the representative for one of the other competing houses uh, was completely fine through the plague. So he says, well, it just makes you wonder if Catamark is involved. I'm going to go back to Land King Hall now, and I think I'll sleep till morning. That seems like a sensible action. Yeah, as they're pointing out in the chat, there's a lot of side quests, and I think it goes to what you were saying earlier, Bryce, about the world building. Well, might have been you, Palace. That 
this game does a phenomenal job of building the world that it's in. And those side quests help to do that. Ah, my torch just burned out. All this litter around. There's the a quite a bit of uh, content that isn't even really tied to quests. There's just if you know where to go, then. Yeah, that's. True. It all adds. It all adds up to make the world feel much more alive than in many other RPGs. I actually I'd say a lot of that would be the notice. schedules. Yeah, Papantis you. apparently you... figured out the secret that um, the water was the problem, and now he's just going to live at the bar. <laughs> Don't drink the water, right? Yeah. Uh, I realized I, I missed Demoticus, so I thought I'd better talk to him. This is the traveling bard Demoticus. He's another interesting character because he moves throughout the game. So he starts a lot. in uh, Lanking Hall, and then he's in the bridge, and then he's in Academia. So, and you can ask different characters about him, and they all they all kind of know, and their prompts kind of update throughout the game. And they'll they'll say like, "Oh, he was just here recently," or "I heard he was there, you know, traveling, whatever." I always remember tracking that guy down as like one of the most uh, difficult things. Uh, difficult things uh, whenever I actually play this game. <laughs> yeah, he kind of just helps Even us Prusa. stitch some ideas together about like the bandits and the, the houses and things. Yeah, you're right. Prusa is another elusive one. All right, let's go to. The oldest, but also the most run-down city. Or the mother city. Now, this one kind of has a maze of old houses and things to explore. It's, it's definitely Sithra's biggest city. There's just so many little secrets and hidden things here, and uh, or as a whole sewer level too. Yeah, what time is it here? There's a sundial. It's nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can use the sundial to get like a time reading. There's a skill too that helps you with that, but I'm not a rogue, so I have to learn. Um, Firsty sundial only works during the day. I'm I'm getting pointed out that I'm skipping a lot of things, so I need to grab some things. There we go, let's pick up this magic staff. I do like this staff because it gives you a light aura. If you, if you squint right, you can see uh, those lizards in there have uh, six legs each. Oh, I had never even noticed that. Looks like most of Kadimia is still asleep at nine. I was told to seek out Halos. Now he won't talk to me right now. He just says he's busy. It's of course something tied to the schedule where, you know, he has a point in the day when he's doing work and therefore he's like, no, I, I don't have time for you now. So let's train on persuasion. So if I tell him that uh, Demodocus, I only need the first few characters to trigger that, but uh, now he'll talk to me. Okay, I'm trying to remember the order here. I think it's, um... That was not it. Academia. Okay, I have to restart with respect. Days. Academia. Grapes. What is it, belt? I'm just trying to do this off memory. <laughs> it's kind of an absurd string. But if you click the right string, he'll teach you things. Um, and, and maybe it's belt again. Yeah, there we go. I want to learn uh, persuasion. So now if you look at my abilities, I have persuasion, which means I can go talk to Halos.
there other things that persuasion does for you? Um, it will, uh, Ake will talk to you with persuasion. Yeah, I have nearly your set. So for instance, before it said he won't talk, and now he says he will. Okay, let's ask him about Propontis. So this is where we get into kind of the political angle behind the story. The idea is that it's a big fight for power. So we have uh, House Aedas that's becoming weak while Common is becoming stronger. And then you have the different rivalries between the House and all of those working together to make them cumulatively weaker. Let's go ahead and get his name, I guess. I'll go meet the judge, but then I think I'll go to Kasha. Kind of just explore the cities a little bit. You could just spend hours exploring the game. If you kind of run through, you can get a lot of the content really quickly, but there's no shortage of stuff to do in Sakura. And this uh, is he tells us the same stuff we've seen from Sakura. Uh, when I first figured out how to um, edit the propolis and uh, make eggs, I put one uh, out in front of the judge's palace there uh, that spawned a bunch of liches. Um, and interestingly, the guards did not attack them, even when one of the liches accidentally shot the judge with uh, a lightning bolt. He was, he was aiming for one of my party, but he hit the judge instead. So. Uh, I'm thinking that the guards, they need to pay them better or something. That's probably true. It's, it's their alignment. Um, there's actually very few uh, of the characters that have a good alignment. Uh, Magpie and Alaric and uh, the player character, I think, uh, have good alignment. Um, whereas the vast majority of people like in D&D are, are neutral. something about the audio issues we're having here. It's kind of Murphy's Law, right? The, um, System will always fail if it can. At just the worst. Moment. Oh, so this uh, this building in Kosha, uh, I think I remember it being based on a real building that was excavated in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, I forget what it was called though. I've actually never heard that. I didn't know. So there we met the leader of House Common. We've already met a number of House leaders. It might be the Palace of Nestor, but uh, I'm not 100% on that. I have to look up. I guess you could ask him that. He might remember. He said the story was influenced by Riddle Master of Head. I've also not heard that. Every city has a judge, but as you can tell, uh, Kasha is a little bit different because the whole thing is just that one city. So there's really, or just that one house. So there's not as much um, for the judge to do. So I'm asking about this, this person who worked for him, and he's giving me a quest to go find him. Let's go ahead and make Prusa appear as well. So they've had a lot of people leave this town. So it is the Palace of Nestor. It's it's a dead ringer for Kosha. The main building at the uh, there is almost exactly the same. There's uh, a little bit 
of differences in the kind of the main audience fault area, but it's very similar looking. Interesting. Yeah, you can get a good overhead view out here. That's kind of one of the fun things. The the city in the city idea is that you have the large overhead view. I don't know why I'm heading up to Prusa because she's not going to give me anything today. She's just kind of out here babbling at the headrooms. I'm going to go to the farm. I'll do a couple more of the things over on this side of the land. So a lot of side characters. And goats. Oh yeah, this is where you can milk the goats. Oh yeah, you can purchase um, cheese too. So you could purchase butter or uh, cheese there. Yeah, and in fact, you can uh, milk the goats and make butter for the bread, I believe. What do you mean? You need the pail? Um, yeah, so you milk the goats. So now you notice this pail is filled with milk, right? That's interesting. So apparently the uh, overworld sprites for the cities uh, come programmatically from their data, Glenn is saying. So that's a helpful feature. If you change something, you don't have to change it uh, manually for consistency. That is really interesting because that means you can change the maps uh, without having to redraw the whole world. Um, so I just... But you'd have to, you'd have to do it, man. There we go. So now what happened is I made butter and I buttered the bread. So that's just one example of how uh, all these little parts have different interactions. So now I have buttered bread. Let's see who this is. All these people want to know my name. I'll just go by Bell. The goat farmers. I don't think the child will ever speak to me. If I'm not mistaken. Mr. Pace, yeah, I think he is too shy. Yeah, that's true. If you try to put wine in the bucket, it, it doesn't work. It just it tells you it's crude and boorish. Alright. Let's see, it's you can tell by the sun position down here that it's like one o'clock or something, so it might be in his house. Recall wine in an urn is a, uh, a recipe for a good party, and butter in an urn is a recipe for a really good party. Some, no, oil in the. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so um, I think uh, it's uh, Darth uh, Selex in the. Um chat that says you probably mentioned why you moved the bucket before picking it up. Oh yeah. I didn't want to get them mad for stealing it. You can move things and then, then take them. It's a bug that kind of gets a little bit too for the exploited. The only thing that impacts is karma. Like when I talk to him you can see my text color down here. If I steal a lot that'll get darker and if I do a lot of good it will become lighter. So because I've rescued her Adney and cured the plague I'm, I have a lot lighter karma than I did before. So we've been told these have gone sour. And if you examine it, you find this piece of kelp. So a lot of stuff is going on in the land. I, uh, I see you have also acquired a shovel. Uh, yeah. Shovels were a, uh, so, a pivotal part of... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Well, I... Anyone with knowledge of the game knows that there's books scattered throughout the land, and one of them requires a shovel. And then there's also a character we want to visit, who I'll need a shovel to get to. Just uh, collected one of those books there on the coast. I feel like the text chat is bullying me into turning this into a speedrun. 
I think they're pulling you into a 100% run. That could be. But uh, anyway, with uh, respect to shovels, uh, I uh, have a, a special fondness for them because uh, they were very important in my reverse engineering efforts. Uh, when I was figuring out the scripting system, uh, I would reprogram the shovel's use action to do all sorts of different things. Uh, I programmed it at one point the, sh the shovel to turn things into goats. Yeah, you made the goat universe. Uh, yeah, that was when I figured out loops, and then I made the shovel turn everything into goats. Yeah, reading every book scroll in parchment would definitely be... I, I can't even figure the percent runs we've been doing... Um, they're not that high in percentage. They're just barely enough to get you there. I'm going to go talk to the mages now in pinks. Because we've had enough people talking about magic and things. We might as well head that way. And there are a lot of really interesting things uh, in the in the text. Um, uh, well, here is a, an actually an excellent example because they have a whole library here. Uh, really fills in a lot of the backstory and world building, but you don't have to look at most of it. So if you're not interested in that kind of thing, it isn't intrusive. But it's there if you if you're curious about it. One thing that's uh, also different in Scythera as opposed to many other games is that the you don't start with skills, you start with aptitudes, which, you know, then you can trade for free to get the skills later. The convenient thing that Lore starts with two aptitude in each of attack, defense, mana, and casting. Uh, and you'll just get you know, one additional level in whatever it is that you trained in. But if you've got the aptitude and you can get them all for free, the game engine will just give, you know, the, the whole initial batch as one training session, which is convenient. Yeah, so a neat thing here is because every character has a schedule, there are rooms where everybody can go to eat, then there are rooms where everybody can go to be in class, and then there are rooms where everybody can go to sleep. So I'm just gonna traipse around the classes. I don't care. See their uh, their lecturing routines there that the uh, instructors have. Um, are, I think the the last thing um, that I got working in the assembler when I was working on uh, Redelve and Delphi, um, it oh, the was is. really strange. Yeah, the the way that the way that it's implemented is really strange. I didn't know you could have a function inside a function when I started out writing that disassembler uh, and I smacked up into the halting problem with trying to disassemble that. So uh, it, it was interesting. It was, it's a very complex game under the hood. So uh, Selenus here never remembers your name. <laughs> if you try to access these doors, uh, you have to have a password. So that is a, a large overarching quest, is how to get the passwords to these higher degree halls. And we're supposed to seek out these books of wisdom. I have acquired a couple, so we can go ahead and get some, uh, some of these. Yeah, and in fact, the grinding, um, I mean, there really isn't much grinding in this game because you can play the whole game without much combat. Uh, Redworld, you might be a better authority on this on the chat here. Um, I believe you finished the game without combat. Is that not the case? Whoops, I'm using the wrong copy here. I don't pay attention. So I'm going to learn a few spells. This is another thing that's really neat about the game. 
because there's all these different spells. And you use them in different cases. Friend or foe, there are spells for each. to say that uh, Sithra has the best RPG spell name ever, uh, which you've just learned, is the sleeping spell, uh, Soporiferousness. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, I just love that name for some reason. Well, we're in a library, let's take a look at these bookshelves. So there's books scattered throughout that you can kind of pull up and read, and they actually do have a lot of interesting uh, background story. That's part of the idea with the world building. And I think that's part of where uh, we all enjoy the game so much, is how rich the backstory is. Definitely. Yeah, so this is um, contemplation about uh, Alan Floyd. Here's the settlement of Abydos, the history of it. Kind of its own um, what is it, Roanoke, the lost city of Roanoke type thing where suddenly the entire populace vanished. Um, yeah, the Scylla, we have a good tie here to that. Student veterans are up here. I explored the fact that the office is downstairs. Here's another sapphire book. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go talk to Time. Showed the crystal to Lindus. Yes. This is the Lion King. I can't help but pronounce his name as Timon. Uh, yeah, I, 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 the pronunciation is an interesting point. Because there's no dialogue, right? Or there's no um, audio. There's dialogue, but I've always said Timon, and I don't know how, yeah, how people I, pronounce it. I thought it was Timon, but uh, I don't know either. Timon sounds the most Greek to me. That could well be. But yeah. I think he was a general or something, but uh, I'm not sure. Well, I gather the, connect the correct pronunciation of the game is Scythera, or something to that effect. Um, but yeah, Gendrys would really be the authority on probably how he pronounced it or how he envisioned it being. Uh, yeah, it would, be, uh, it would be nice if we got the audio working so we could get the canonical pronunciations. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Um, but it, there's a lot of weird audio issues that are going on in the back end there, so... Alright, so what should I be uh, trying for here? We got um, the crystal from Time, and actually I guess I better have Time and join me, hadn't I? I forgot to add him to the party. Uh, he's a pretty fun Say one to have. Say it's time to go down now. That makes sense. Let's do that. I like having um, a magic user along. So he says, well, you know, I should be studying, but hey, I'll learn a lot from you. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to leave it so he doesn't lose too much of like this. Let's go. So we got that first shard of the Corona. We got another one from uh, Timon or Timon here. And now we're being told getting two parts is easy, but we've got to get the other parts now. Now, okay. But now we have something that we can use on other things. Uh, so here we have our, our, our. Yeah. So now this corona can be used to do special things force, like this. Just want to like to comment uh, about this uh, force field effect that's done with palette animation, which is not something that you saw much uh, of in 1999, but it was a 
graphics technique that uh, was very popular uh, in the 80s. Um, and Zithra uses it actually to, to great effect. Anytime you see pulsating purple um, uh, or brown like that, that's palette animation. Even the, the covers of books uh, and things like that that have the purple on them are, are animated. Um, and also the water. Yeah, um, the water in the trees. Both yeah. use that, don't they? Uh, the water, only the water. The trees uh, have a different kind of animation only on the PowerPC version, though. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, no one has figured out the background of the Kroll Nine. We have figured out a lot of things about this game, but there's so much thought that went into every part. It is... There's a lot of mystery. So here we're told the name of that crystal is the Chroma. This is our, our uh, first cell day, is it not? Yeah, actually, I think I should get Timon or Timon here because he can be all amazed about it. He's all thrilled to, to see one because that he spends all his time studying them. This would be uh, some of the native elemental inhabitants of uh, the land. There's like some slugs and stuff around in here too sometimes, I think. Yeah, and the interesting thing about them is that they aren't really aggressive, but sometimes your followers will attack them. It's, uh, I'm not quite sure how the decision making is done. Obviously they're gross and they need to be removed from existence. <laughs> That's probably it. Let's see, who else all is in here? This one might be sleeping. Yeah. They don't, they don't sleep in very comfortable positions, if you ask me. Oh, I, I guess I can feed my followers. Did I ever equip a helmet? I never did. And let's give him the staff, and I can take a sword. That way we'll still have light. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of food. So we have kind of that main quest line started that we need to get more parts of the Chroma. And we know these Mitic things are real. But there's so much exploration to be done. Oh, an anagram for lock. Interesting. A green glowing thing that's pretty dangerous. This underground here connects to just by pinks or nicks. I'm not sure how that's actually pronounced. Oh, they're chasing poor Timon or Timon, however you want to pronounce it. Boy, there's tons of them out here. Fortunately, everybody else will handle them. It's nighttime, everybody's asleep, so let's go and venture, um, let's go into an iron mine. That's a perfect activity to do at night. It'll be I dark mean, there anyway. It's gonna be dark, yeah, exactly, it's dark there anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is the arrangement that we did on the speedrun, too. I usually end up going to the iron mine and seeing my first Seldane there, um, 
but uh, I guess there's lots of different orders you can do it in. Yeah, the advantage you, to this you... order is learning the language. Oh right, yeah, you, you, it's not really much good to uh, uh, to uh, visit him if you can't talk to him. Yeah, because you'll just get. Um... Well, I was going to say gibberish, but it's just the Seldan language. Right. And I'm not. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever cracked the Seldan language. We don't have enough samples. If Glenn wants to give us more samples, we probably would spend a long time trying to decipher it. I'm sure that uh, that would be a lot of fun for us. But as it is, I don't think we know what it means. It just looks like gibberish. You get that on augurgers. And I'm just venturing here because everyone else is asleep. But if I had explored more of Catamarca or Academia earlier, I would have um, been prompted with the quest to come to this iron mine because the miners are scared that it is haunted because of that cell sitting down there. Very interesting. So apparently, the, uh, Glenn is saying that the cell is a phonetic version of ancient Egyptian. Ghost. Their names are Transformers or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and honor um, General. She's in the uh, Lands End Volcano, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so she's in the far, far corner. So again, I'll, I'll pull up that map. So you can stop in Abydos. Oh yeah, I can actually visit with Oh yes, yeah, so it's definitely, definitely more interesting at night. Yeah, so we saw that book earlier about the ruins of Abydos, and um, so we, we kind of started the game up here, and we did all the Odemia Academia stuff, but now we're in this portion of the land, and yeah, that lost settlement of Abydos is down here. We read that book on it, and lands in Volcano. A reminder of a great failure. So, of course, Omen tells us that Tavera was the one who destroyed the city when they turned against him. Tavera is kind of the cautionary tale, I guess, about the blood-lusted mage. Should be some ghosts wandering around. Here we go. So if we, well, use the, the prompts here. They they're sad about the loss of their lives, and then if you ask about Tavera, they they shake violently. They're mad. You guys think I can take on the demon? Definitely... It would be definitely interesting to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll save and try it. Very, oh, very interesting. So, uh, Tabara is an anagram for Avatar, apparently. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess if you put Avatar and Tavara together, you'd get something like Avatara. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. The moderator of Sathira for many years. I am so afraid to open this door. I at least have Mystic Arrow. So maybe... Oh, and like Portimone is going to get cluttered, I guess. Uh... You know what? Uh... I'll let him die, and we'll just use the necklace on him. Let me bind a couple keys here. I'm on a laptop keyboard, so it's not great. Actually, can anybody... Uh, they have to have a magic weapon to hurt him, right? So I need to give him a leader, like the staff, because Timon is going to die. You blow it up with a bomb? I don't remember if it if it takes bomb damage. I or not. don't believe that bombs harm magical creatures. Unfortunately, 
course of these guys also have a degree of magic resistance, so... Well, he's saving the game, right? <laughs> yeah, I see. He's intent on attacking, uh, Timon, so maybe that will work to my advantage here. I don't know if I can hit anything. Oh, I'd better take the staff, because I could do magic damage with that. In fact, I can actually use it to, uh... Yeah, we have a good point here that he can cast Mr. Hero. And he has a lot more magic than I do. Maybe I should have trained an attack. I don't think we've even wounded this guy yet. He's a little bit beyond us. Mm. You can see his hit points by looking at him, right? No, I think you just get the question marks. Right. Okay. Oh, actually, it's not even showing me that. But that makes sense, because he doesn't have a portrait. Right, he's not an actual NPC. He's a monster. Doesn't seem like it's really going anywhere. No, I don't think we're getting anywhere. Let's go get the book. Whoops, he just killed Simon. That was unkind of him. He's gonna kill everybody. With you, so you can visit back at Night King Hall. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have done a resurrection. Here, let's let... I only have one magic weapon, so somebody effective's got to use this. Hector can probably kill him, right? Yay! Oh, okay, wow. Now, who oh. says that we can beat a demon at this point in the game? I think we had better go back, though... Um, to Land King Hall before we try anything else, don't you? Oh, I think that we can would be prudent. It. Yeah, we don't have enough magic. We better go back. Now, this is one problem with followers: is um, sometimes you get a timeout stage where you're not coming into the correct area. It waits for them. Any other problems? Yeah, the, go the, path, the pathfinding is a little sketchy. Um, I don't remember them having uh, anything else. Do they respond to the name of the settlement? I think they just gesture around. To... Oh, I need to eat something so I can regenerate my magic. Uh, Jenner eats buttered bread, doesn't she? Because I, I buttered the bread. I didn't leave myself enough magic for... Oh, I have a scroll of um, Direct Nexus. Let's use that. I just cast Vision of Night, maybe. Alaric is up in that room. I'm going to get to him. So, um... Really? This area, uh, white room is. Oh, yeah, Alaric just doesn't mind at all that you moved out his door with the bomb. I mean, he's just cool as a cucumber, isn't he? Yeah, uh, but anyway. Bothers him. Yeah, but um, what I was going to say is the uh, the so called white room that was reached by save file hacking is in the uh, upper left of this level. Yeah, well, um, actually, it's. Um, I think it's to the left of the secret passage. Let's go into that secret passage. It is going to be to the left of that as well. Uh, and I've been of the opinion that that 
is not really an incomplete area, but was just a testing area from early on in development. Uh, and that's why it just has a few things there maybe uh, for testing. But I'm kind of curious if, uh, if that was an incomplete area versus uh, just a, a testing area that was not deleted. I don't know. Now here's another question for Glenn, which is the Sapphire books and this brazier pattern, we've kind of been discussing how this ties into the idea of the Tree of Life. And, oh, did I do the wrong order to light that? Must have done. Um, when you light these in the correct order, there's kind of a puzzle that it tells you the, the path of wisdom is found on the ser serpent path. And I don't think it does anything beyond that, but all the names of the books and things are kind of linked to this idea of a tree of life. And there is actually a game zone for the tree of life. But it's not finished, so I was always curious, what is the... Um, what was the idea behind the Tree of Life region? And I assume that, that the brazier puzzle was meant to actually teleport you there. I'm not sure if that is the case or not, though. I mean, that all makes sense to me, but uh, I guess only Glenn here can uh, tell us for sure if he wants to. Yeah, it's just one of those mysteries that he has maintained. Looks like we're getting a small place there, I'm not sure. Um, Cause that. There are some interesting interactions that happen sometimes with cloud glitches. Uh, can we report to Sekus now about the cache uh, that we found, the spy in Lanking Hall? Because there's that secret passage. Oh, she's not up at uh, eight. All right. Okay, I guess that doesn't count. I'd have to go to the roughing encampment. Yeah, Breadworld has the full uh, schedule for everybody. Um, in a few minutes, I think we should hop over and look at some of the bug fix patches and some of the later game content. I'm not quite sure the order we want to do. This is a good opportunity to talk, talk about the music, because one thing that you'll notice is every zone has its own music. And we did actually uh, have a discussion with Randy Pringle. It's not... he's not on the live stream, unfortunately. But... Uh, you know, I reached out to him a few years ago about it, and he talked quite a bit about his experience making music. And his approach to this was that he just had a list from Glenn and Andrew of all the different zones that they wanted, or the different types of music they wanted. And he came up with a whole bunch of different themes for that. And uh, it's a pretty good set of music. We actually just reworked them last year and released a kind of a fan-made 20th anniversary soundtrack. So uh, anybody who hasn't heard that should check that out. But I encourage you to listen and enjoy the music as well. All right, so we're getting told here that the reason Center left is actually not uh, that he was sick of the job, but because Pelagan died. And of course, Pelagan is someone we met. So we're going to go confront him about that. I think maybe you should stop it yourself. That's a good idea, yeah. And then switch over, because you're not going to get for the two-hour mark, right? Yep. Well, we did start a little bit late, too, but I agree. Sure. Yeah. So he, he finds it ridiculous that Stinter thinks he's dead, of course. Yeah, let's go talk to Ursul. We have a shovel and everything. There's some unicorn. You can actually kill them and uh, get food that way. So there's a whole... Six-legged unicorn. Yeah. 
not clear if those are uh, reptilian, though, is it? I don't think those ones are. The Titans look They're reptilian not, to me. Not That's probably just a graphics thing of how they um, chose to represent them. But maybe it ties into their species. There is actually a bestiary as well. Oh yeah, basically rhinos. So the idea would be they're mammals, I guess. This is gonna hurt. Okay, so Omen is telling me to get hurt. You didn't uh, learn resist fire. You know what I did actually. There's also a also a potion uh, that the Smith's friend potion. Yeah, Smith's friend. I can show that in a moment. So Omen scared us away, Bye, saying that this guy will do anything, and now this guy's saying he doesn't care. So these are the air elementals. Herself is the uh, coolest elemental, I think. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty interesting. Now he'll respond to a few specific things. Um, what is it, history that he responds to? Yeah, so he talks about the destruction of Abydos with a traitor and the Undyne. Um, now, I assume this is a typo. Uh, actually, if you look at the hint book, the Undyne were initially going to be named the Seldyne, I believe, which was probably changed just to avoid confusion. But uh, here we have the, the revenge on the Seldyne who used him as puppets. I think it's probably the Undyne, because they were the ones working more closely with Tabra. Although that's not necessarily confirmed. The is that usually it's only checking the first four characters of anything you type, so if it was Seldane and Seldine, then it would be very confusing uh, the same four character prefix. So let me do, uh, I should have resist fire, right? Did I not turn that one? Oh, I didn't turn that one. Okay. Well, yeah, if I had the potion resist fire, I'd be able to go over that. Um, okay, so should we hop over? Oh, should I go show it really quickly? Just so we have all the elementals. Sure. That won't take but a moment. Yes, Ursulf and Igne, I think, are the interesting ones because uh, they no longer really act in the world. They, the now is between uh, water and earth, uh, and fire and sort of talk about what's happening and be open about it. I'm not remembering exactly where his cave is. There it is. He's actually quite close to Ursul. Yeah, they're interesting too because their people are kind of extinct at this point. Hopping down here. The main game window is the only resizable window in the game, right? Um, Play at a high resolution and expand the window to the full size in order to actually see him. That is true. If you play on a very small screen, it can actually be very hard to see him. Yeah, so he's, he's a good general point of knowledge on um, the elementals, although we're told not to trust him. Or really anybody for that matter. Does he respond to, um, I don't think he responds directly to the, yeah, he's all about the, the pillars.
Okay, let me uh, switch over and we can look at a bug fix version. Should we do that really fast? All right. Okay, so I'm just going to um, quickly set this up for a bug fix version. So one of the things that Bryce has done is made a patch that fixes a few different elements of the game. Um, for instance, the fetch spell, which is bugged and grabs objects and doesn't put them in your inventory, uh, and the fishing skill that was never quite uh, fully implemented. I am um, having a issue with the fixed data file. It's not wanting to load. I will load it up on a different user. I think I have one actually that I can stuff and use. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly copy over this other one and see if I can make that work. Working with modern OSs and emulators are a bit of a problem because the the uh, data fork. Okay, here we go. I'm going to switch back. Sorry, I just realized that the audio for um, your guys' audio may not have been streaming in on that portion. It was probably music. Okay, so I don't think that one um, worked correctly but I do have another one here. One thing that's maybe worth talking about a little bit is just the question of this game, there's still people uh, playing it 20 years after the fact. Yeah. Because uh, I think that um, games, there's maybe three of them that still have extant communities. There's the banter and brawl people who are the largest, I assume. There's the Avara people who still get together. And then there's, uh, I think, a big community, but 20 years later still does. That is the game that captured people's imaginations. Part of it is that... Uh, then there was the Ambrosia web boards that people sort of migrated to after they finished the game because there was, you know, plenty to talk about, but then there was still more to sort of imagine and uh, people started to write their own stories, which I know that uh, Gandrius was never particularly into, but certainly kept the community together, together for a long time. Um, did, did the uh, did that Sethra data lose its resource fork? Because it looked like a text file. Um, I think it has it, but the icon is wrong. But I, we're going to find out in a moment here. Okay. It had lost its fork, and I copied it over and res it. All right, I think I have um, a file of just old saves lying around in here. Um, yeah, here's an old one. I'm sure my brother and I fought over the name of this character, and we settled on um, Nutcase. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here is um, 
What do we have? So this character should have fetch, I think. Um, so we should be able to fetch an object and have that work. So what do I not have an in inventory that I can I can get? Um, I should be able to fetch those flowers, right? Yeah, you can also fetch uh, you can also fetch a lamp that you can pick up. It's one of the things they changed in uh, version two of the patch was that it uh, appropriately extinguishes things when they go into your unwielded inventory. Here it is. Yeah, so the flowers are now in my inventory. Uh, in the original version, the flowers would just be out of, they'd be gone. Uh, Fetch kind of had two bugs with it. Uh, the fact that the things didn't appear in your inventory uh, was certainly one of them. Uh, the other kind of aspect was that you could fetch some wildly inappropriate things. Uh, sometimes this was kind of handy for, for cheating, like you could uh, uh, fetch doors, if I remember correctly. Uh, but also you could fetch cities from the overworld. So you're like, oh, you don't like Kosha because it's a haven of corruption? Well, that's okay. We'll just, we'll just annihilate it. <laughs> yes, and I'd say that we did our fair bit of annihilating things that way. Uh, what's the quest log on this guy look like? Oh yeah, this guy. So this would have been, uh, oh, an old character from unregistered days. You'll notice there's, we don't have like the crystal quest done or any of the magic stuff learned. So, um, let me show fishing. I think I can just do that with a new character, can't I? Uh, if you have some way that you can get the fishing rod. I guess there's one in uh, Academia, uh, Red World Mercy 453 was saying earlier, if I remember correctly. Yeah, let's see. Let's pull up... Um... This is a different character. Oh yeah, this Called is good to show. This is a, right this there. is a female character. Now, I've always been amused. The male character has the um, kind of kilt-like garment. The female character is the only character in the game who wears pants, I think. So, uh, Glenn says there is a debug mode for creating objects and teleporting. Um, so, was that compiled out, uh, or is that still here somewhere? We'll find it. It's there. Well, we definitely poured over. So, one of the things about the Delver runtime engine is that because the engine itself is just the runtime and everything else is in the scripts, um, there's so much that, as long as you kind of have an understanding of the Delver format, you can explore how a lot of the game is glued together. So it's pretty entertaining. A very flexible. It's definitely a fascinating uh, thing to go through it and see how all the details of, of uh, how it was implemented. Um, one thing that I just have to have to say that I. Uh, was utterly fascinated that's, that's a good word for when i found it was in the compressed graphics format that dover uses for the the tile graphics uh it uses a form of compression that's sort of similar to what gif uses which is not that surprising but it's not the same format and it has um in some of the operation codes for the compression non-consecutive bit fields so in other words, uh, the, the data is packed together at a smaller than a byte level, um, which is appropriate for a compression technology, of course, you want to make it as small as possible. But there are quantities embedded in there where not all of the bits for them are consecutive. There's uh, one field will be split up by other things how why it was done that way since uh i didn't wasn't under the impression that it had to maintain compatibility with anything else um so yeah that that's my my burning question about uh, the dover engine technically is why that was done uh, bread world is suggesting i show off that there's a nothing character um in the corner of every zone here yeah yeah it's actually a character um 
Now that is, I think, the unused portrait of Gratius, who is the was the major domo of Prusa. And if you go to the online dialogue, the interactive online dialogue, his dialogue is restored there. But um, he was removed from the final game. Okay, I I need some way to get a fishing pole. Turn the chat. Oh, okay. Compression factor and speed. Answer to the fishing pole question. Back in Kadimia. Oh, yeah. I have an idea. I'm going to use Death Strike on the box to get the bombs to use the bombs to blow. Um, open the. In the chest, apparently. The chest in Kadimia. Yeah. So, um, if I'm understanding uh, correctly, the reason for having a, uh, a custom graphics format was to achieve an optimal balance between the compression factor and the, street and the speed of decompression. Is that what you mean? Oh, I didn't see the... I saw the net. Um, but the net is different than the fishing pole, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, it is right there. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. I thought it was in that chest. Okay. Anyways, I, I amped up the game speed, which gives us um, ability to move around a little more easily. Okay, uh, so I just have to cast this... Uh, what, two tiles away from the shoreline? Uh, I think you could just be anywhere that you can get uh, to deep water. This is a good time of day for this area. Grill the fish somewhere? I'm catching the fish like crazy. Not so much as the, the thing is that the, uh, the fish finding algorithm depends on location and time of day, so... We were discussing earlier how it's kind of pseudo-random. Um, I should be able that to drill the fish. same time of day to that same spot, uh, you'll probably have a high probability of getting a fish there again. Yeah, got a few different ones. Uh, Palace, do you want me to show off the... Um... Mm -hmm one of the mods that you made. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to. Uh, I think it's... It's kind of an interesting way to look at... I think it emphasizes how flexible the game is because it, there's really nothing that's hard-coded really into the engine. And I think that's a point that uh, Glenn has made a number of times. And it it means really the scenario can be anything. I think it's really the right way to do a game. If you're not implementing the game uh, for an RPG, um, if you're not implementing the game already in a high-level language like uh, Python or something, uh, it's much better to have an embedded scripting language. And that's very common nowadays on all sorts of games. But it was not as common at this point. And there are more games with hard-coded logic in a low-level programming language. It's not a scripting language that the game has. It's a virtual machine, even. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on your on your definitions. Uh, but yes, it is a virtual machine. That's a, a, how it's implemented, like Java. You have to compile your scripts to the game still. It's just a, a different language. I guess I, I seem to recall right. Gandrius is, was into Python, and so uh, although we don't really know that much about the original scripting language. There, there's the one sample that indicates it looks kind of like Python. Well, we did have that one fragment uh, he posted of the gain EXP function on the Ambrosia forums. And that, by the way, was really my Rosetta Stone in figuring out the scripting system. Uh, an analogy that, that holds better than you might think, because just like they use the cartouches with proper names to align the Egyptian and uh, the other text on the Rosetta Stone. Uh, I used the integer constants in the game EXP fragment 
um, to align the compiled code with uh, that source code that Glenn posted. Uh, and from there, I was able through experiment and, and observation to uh, work out pretty much uh, all of the um, uh, virtual machines machine code. Did you just have Alaric join you? Uh, yes. <laughs> and Magpie. Magpie is a great party member because he's good aligned. So well, is Alaric, and well, bad guys really like to attack them. Yeah, and they're also quite tough. So, I mean, there's that too. The funny thing is that um, they kind of just, they follow me around and everyone else goes about their routines. Uh, he doesn't, hasn't even introduced himself to you yet. Oh, Magpie hasn't? Oh, you're right. <laughs> there we go. Now I know. Uh, Magpie's place is with Alaric, so, you know, and sense. Magpie does too. No, let's have him come along and rescue her. Anyway. The more the merrier. The strangers are permitted to to enter. The king is right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um, let's have them. Now their strategies are berserk, which Breadroll just pointed out to me that attack nearest is one of the more effective strategies, so I'm gonna, or weakest. So I'm gonna use that. So this just kind of showcases how you can really um, make a lot of edits. I don't think you didn't make that many changes in the game. Well, most of it was default. just editing one default uh, file, which uh, has basically some default dialogue for all human characters. Yeah, and the engine is flexible enough and... to just handle that change. Like whoever you put in your party just handles. I think the um, uh, was there, isn't there some weirdness that happens when you try, to, try to get guards or PCs that are in multiple places at once to join? Or yeah, you? they turn into blood. Oh, yeah, you, you talk to him when he's outside still. Equation here. Uh, so let's look at more. Yeah, so if you're persuasion you can get Ake to speak with you. Otherwise, you have to go to the garden to meet with her, which actually would be an interesting thing to show because it, it shows how the schedules can be altered. So the quest, for instance, to talk to her about uh, the kidnapping alters her schedule to go to the garden at night and she'll speak with you there when there's no one else around. But yeah, it's kind of entertaining when you can have the, the powerful characters of the game follow you around. Um, but this doesn't actually preclude. I mean, this edits so little, I can go and load up the character that we had earlier. And there's nothing incompatible about it. So. Yeah, here's the Ionis. And th so there's a whole side quest for finding the Ionis. You can talk to his sister, who's a student at Pink's. Or Nix, I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. I think it's uh, Nix or Phoenix. But you can finish the side quest pretty quickly like that. I think I'll go, um, I will go Honor Jinra really fast. With the game speed turned up, you can really move pretty quickly through here.
Let's see, I have to go up above here. Yeah. So you can see the multi levels that the cave supports here. Let's get some healing. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Uh, uh, that would explain a lot. I just just referring to uh, Ben's comment here about Ultima Six. I think I have Ultima Six on the old game, so I have to uh, take a look at that. I've never looked under the hood of that. I'm not familiar enough with the uh, Ultima scenario file. So I don't know how compatible it is, but that sounds like an interesting challenge. Is that where some of the unusual aspects of the graphics format come from? Is it implementing compatibility with another game? Yeah, maybe having a resist fire would help. Poison. Yeah, the poison doesn't help either. Let's give her buttered and baked bread. A special food. So here's the whole story about uh, Jinrei falling in love with um, Diaxis. We blasted all our study open, didn't we? Yeah, we did. This must be during the day, though. Leaguer is actually not not bad when he is actually attacking. Okay, let's go talk to Diaxis now that we have honored Jinra. I wanted to stick pretty close to two hours and just show a whole lot of different things about the game, but we got kind of a late start with all those audio issues, so I'm tempted to just kind of run through, show a little bit more. Well, yes, uh, Celix is right. Uh, this is the joint scenario. We've honored Jinra. So he just tells about his son Bahudi, who is Magpie. And we already heard all of this, of course. Now, I guess he doesn't have, have the to join. No. That's okay then. Let's go back to. And now we can talk to him about this name. Seldane responses, so I didn't get to him yet. He does, however, give us what we need, which is the other key into Maidi. Um, do you have a save file with the strange device? That's kind of a, an interesting um, thing as well. So we kind of blew a lot of the side yes. puzzles. Edible strange device. Oh. Uh, oh is the yes, edible strange device, edible strange uh, device. One, of those, one of those things that happens when you divide food sometimes? That is true. Let you me divide food over. while you have the lockpicking aptitude, but not the skill. That's really interesting. I never, uh, never looked into that one before. I think I have a new rogue character who can demonstrate the 
Edible Strange device. Oh, no. This character just has a huge fan of followers. <laughs> yeah. I was testing going with this character. <laughs> Uh, this one should have the strange device. Yeah, here we go. Based on the, uh, think a dot. Yes, yeah, so the idea is basically you imagine dropping a marble in the top, right? And it, it will go down, um, based on the setting, it goes left to right, and then it, it changes the colors. So Gandris is a, an intrepid lover of puzzles. Actually, have uh, have that uh, device in real life, not the one that opens magical doors, but the one with oh. the ball falling through the path. Okay, I'm glad you clarified because I, I thought, how did you? <laughs> I thought maybe you you were talking about like cosplay. <laughs> so these are the different patterns. Uh, actually, I, I can probably, go to a cave. I could probably make something with an Arduino. <laughs> At least. Uh... Three think -a dots between the people here. There you go, you can resize that game window. I don't actually have a think -a dot, but um, it is a really interesting algorithm to study. I was trying to do it um, non procedurally, and it's a lot easier when you just think about the uh, recursion in the algorithm. I think here we have a door that will open this way. Yeah, we've already been to it, but I can open and close it. Oh yeah, there's the strange device pedestal. So that operates the door, and then if I do this again... This is where you can get things like the... Uh, who has the mystic armor on? Maybe no one has the Mystic Armor. But here's like um, the Mystic Helmet. And you can get Mystic Armor and then also a Spear. The problem with the Spears is that they frequently get stuck in objects. So, let's... Oh yeah, he still has his think -a dot Gandra says. Uh, I believe this is not the only um, puzzle element that's inspired from like a childhood toy. I think there are one or two other puzzles that have inspirations from different places, but I, I can't can't bring them to mind at the moment. Yeah, you know, any decent house has a teleportation maze in it, right? Let me see what class this is. Is this a rogue? Here we go, yeah, so here's a, a rogue character at the beginning. Uh, we can do the creation of a Actually, will we get an edible strange device, or will this be a mushroom steak? Should be an edible strange device because uh, you've got the aptitude and not the skill. Okay. I think that it's setting the aspect wrong um, if you're getting an edible strange device, but I'm not sure if the uh, strange device is right after the food or not. Okay, so I have uh, one. What it is. That it looks through your inventory to see what skills you have, but it doesn't really distinguish um, uh, skills and uh, items. And as it happens, the lockpicking skill has the same ID as so it was a unused Seldane food uh, item, maybe. So it sees that you've got ID, but it doesn't realize that it's a skill and not an item. Ah. And so then when it goes to convert it to the food, it recreates it as a food item with that same ID. Uh, but then because aptitudes have ID or have the field uh, value of 16 for a Boolean skill only, maybe the food item with the food item only had three or four different kinds when it then it creates that food item with index which just goes into some random uh, sp sprite 
sort of functionally similarly to one of those food items, but it's uh, actually, yeah, it, it sprite instead because it's indexing beyond the assigned to the food item. Then yeah, if you actually train in the lock, lock picking skill, then the uh, value becomes one, and so you get the food item at index one, which is the mushroom steak. Interesting. Um, yeah, I had never looked into that bug, so thank you for uh, figuring that out. Yeah, so here it is. I accidentally looked at it instead of using it, but if I divide it, a um, edible strange device will show up here. So now if I try to use this, it will ask me who I want to feed it to. So, it does satiate my hunger. It's, uh, but it's an entertaining look at the way that uh, when you have all these layers, again, overlapping, there's bound to be little bugs like that. Also, if you look in your abilities list, you'll see that the lockpicking aptitude yeah. is now gone. My, my, and this is why I think uh, lockpicking is a skill that's not that great in the long run, because not only do you have to have a huge amount of reflex, but every time you divide food, it kind of goes away. So... Uh, lock picking isn't one of the most useful skills. It's an interesting skill, though. Okay. I'm gonna go run through my EU really fast. I'm just kind of in between things doing um, a background version of the game. Still got the uh, remote manipulation bug active now, though, because uh, you're on the join data. Yes, uh, that is true. I can't show the lack of remote manipulation. I need to really quickly pull up the um, notes that I have on this puzzle. So, uh, did we want to talk at all about, like, the, um, the critical response and the community, uh, yeah, that kind of thing? I think that's worth talking about. I... Yeah, that would be reasonable, I think. So, it's, uh, kind of surprising to me, um that uh, Cythera wasn't like one of the more financially successful games that Ambrosia had. Um, I don't know, you know, what the details of that are, uh, but it just kind of surprised me. It's always seemed like such a, uh, a good game to me, but I guess uh, this kind of um, 2D RPG was kind of niche at the time, so I don't know if that factored into it. I mean... Spiderweb is still going, so even if it's niche, if you can copies, I guess you can make a, enough out of it. But I, I don't know. I, I sort of got the impression that it's released moved on a little bit at the company as well. Like it. Yeah, I think there were overdue. Ways. Well, there were a lot of. Um technical things to be supported. Like we were discussing earlier about the 68K versus PowerPC. And uh, a lot of considerations went into maintaining 68K support, which must have been a development headache. I, I can only imagine that. Right, but, especially if some of the 68K was uh, having to be maintained in assembly. Yeah, I, I can only imagine it would be... Uh, that would be a, a lost time resource to maintain that. But at the time, it would have been something worth considering doing. Right, well, I mean, that's kind of the paradox, isn't it? When the development of Cythera started, it absolutely would have been a uh, great idea to support 68K, because PowerPC was just coming in uh, at that time. But then by the time the game actually released a lot of beta, 
uh, is much less important, but it already stopped all that development effort. Uh, uh, Glenn says 68k support is a total nightmare to try to get any sort of reasonable performance. Not sure I ever had a 68k computer even. By the time that I had my first Mac, it was a power PC. Uh, our first Mac at home was a 030 Performa, um, and then we had an 040 Performa after that, and after that we went to a uh, power PC, so we had a couple back in the day, but I wasn't programming at that age. <laughs> Some reason the crabs decided that I was the one they should focus on. I, I really think you need some good chase music coming playing right now with that crab. I think I'm gonna die. Uh, let's see. How can I get out of this jam? Uh, directed nexus. I'll I'll do that if I have. No other choice. Well, dying to the crabs is always an option because the amulet will do it for you, right? That's true. Alright, let's have Alar go heal us. Whoops, where is he? Yeah, lighting is an interesting point. Uh, if you look at the lighting in, like, Bacillus 2 versus Sheep Shaver, which is the 68K versus the PowerPC emulator, you'll see that the 68K doesn't really support nearly the type of dynamic lighting. So it'd be like maintaining two code bases. And in fact, was maintaining two code bases. Uh, I think the murder ought to have happened. Right. Gather there were a lot of uh, bugs early on with the persistent memory. At least that's my impression from looking at contemporaneous Usenet posts. Uh, that the amount of persistence memory had to be increased a few times and people were running into problems with that. Yeah, so I'm murdered. Ben says. Yeah, ben says, uh, I don't think the 68K supported wind animation in the trees. Uh, I normally run the game uh, under Basilisk 2, and that's that's the case. Uh, there's no wind animation on 68k. I've actually never had a lot of luck getting Sheep Shaver to run Cythera for whatever reason. Um, so uh, I actually went out and bought a uh, uh, blue and white G3 when I got to that point in my reverse engineering that I wanted to... Uh, do some check out some of the PowerPC specific stuff. I'm noticing that the um, spell sounds are kind of loud. So I'm turning that down. Yeah, having an old Mac around definitely has its advantages. The emulators are getting pretty competent. Oh, one thing I didn't show was um, this journal feature. So every character who's speaking, I can kind of scribe down what they're saying. So now we're getting to the idea of a shapeshifter, and, and that's what Stenter told us. So let me pull up the journal here. Yeah, day four. It's another thing maybe that's worth mentioning is the um, sort of predecessors in Theldro and to some extent Blabo. Yeah, well, and also Chimera, um, which I guess led to some inspiration and story ideas for Sephira. Theldro is in many ways sort of a similar game. RP person, which is, I guess, unusual for an RPG. Um, then Blabo is just a totally different game, a puzzle game. 
So you can sort of see how to Sathira at least. Love is kind of all about emergent behavior, right? Uh, forming complex puzzles out of simple elements. Mm. Shamira? Oh, that could be. Oh, let's see. I want to use... Oh, that's timing. Where will... Here it is. I thought it was pronounced Chimera because uh, it has a, a, a he in, in Greek. Uh, and that's usually rendered as K in English, but I could be wrong, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's that's how I would pronounce it. Or I would have said... Chimera, Scythera. No, Scythera. Fine. Oh, the music puzzle. Yeah, another interesting demonstration of the engine, because here we have a trapdoor. I've been operating them with U's, but some of them are operated by levers, some of them up by other puzzles. Like, we saw the strange device, but this one is using the panpipes, and you have to play a specific tune. It's really quite clever. So this under Kosha room, I remember uh, when I was first playing this game as a kid, um, I got stuck here because I noticed, uh, you know, if you do this wrong at the wrong time, uh, he will kill you. Um, and I was like, oh, well, how can I prevent that? Uh, I'll be blowing him up with the bleed bomb, if I remember correctly, and then got stuck in the game. Oh, no. <laughs> We actually get uh, experience points, I think, for using that staff to generate the cash from the harpy eggs. So that's kind of one of the side you're, mysteries you're, of the You're completing the quest discover source of cash, aren't you, when you do that? Uh, Figuring that it comes from eggs? I think so. Find source. I think I still have to report that back to Sekus, but yeah. And yeah, Pelagon will kill you. If you go down there without the third shard, he will kill you. So you need the, the shard from Maita. So now they're all thrilled saying you you really ought to uh, go use that on Alrur. What are you going to go so, do now? Oh, should I do a bad ending? <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, what I was going to say is that there is a uh, side quest, the wine contract quest, which was never actually finished, but it leads you on this path of meeting with the vineyard runners and asking them about their wine, which we talked to Glavis earlier, he told us about the magic destroying his wine, and here we're, we're told to um, seek out Cherix because he might know. And that's kind of pretty the, neat. The, the um, plot driver for the end of the story. Oh, I never remember the fastest way to Carrick's house. Is there a polyp out here as well? Yes, there are some polyps out there. Cult of Scylla is up in this direction. Okay. Oh, I didn't train in alchemy. Yeah, the Cult of Scylla, the polyps will chase me. In fact, they are chasing me. Did Charax just say, no, I don't, instead of you? Yeah, that's a bug. Uh, <laughs> the, it doesn't switch the speaker correctly for that, that mm. line. Just, a, I think, a script. Well, that's bug. easy to fix. Yeah. Now... Oh, she's teaching now. Oh, maybe she'll be done teaching in a moment. 
Uh, yeah, her balloon there is running. Uh, actually, before I move on to finishing the game, because that'll be like the next step, uh, let's take a look at just a couple of the side places. I know it's getting pretty close to 10.30, and that's like... We only started 15 minutes late, so we're going a little bit over at this point. Um, but I think I have a good character here for exploring everywhere. There's a ghost. So, uh, <coughs> this guy's pretty immune to everything, which means he can go anywhere and explore anywhere. I wonder if we should um, get Alaric again. Oh, that's right. Uh, for some reason, when I edited this one, it bugged out. I Alaric won't talk to me now. I think I can get Magpie, though. Uh, can you guys hear my audio? Um, I was wondering if this is a save file hack. Uh, yes, this is a save file hack. So uh, this is a combination of the join hack, uh, the join mod with a save file hack. The only reason I'm doing it is because this character is immune. I need to reset placements of characters. There he is. Oh, that's right. In this version, he won't join me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this because this is a character who um, can go anywhere and not be hurt. So the flight is a big advantage here, right? I can go over the water. Oh, wow. Uh, can you walk over Ethereal Void, or is that blocked? You cannot. That's so... always blocked. Now, oh. polyps uh, have the ability to fly, or at least uh, they can go across water. So. But yeah, so for instance, uh, we looked at Abydos. Here's the Cult of Scylla. So this is a um, temple up here, I guess. In the uh... oh, this is definitely this is definitely my favorite side dungeon. I think this is also where I discovered uh, uh, save file hacking uh, uh, um, way back when. This is way before I engineered with uh, X editor and the game's data files. I really wanted to uh, get to that grassy area. I don't know why I thought there would be anything of interest there. There actually isn't. I guess one thing I need to do is build up more um, stamina for this character. So I can kill things. Oh well, we'll explore. But yeah, there's, there's polyps everywhere, and... The Sword of Heroes is actually down here, too, in a secret passage down there. Yeah, you can see. There's a secret passage that connects around the back. Felix says, generally, most of the Tavara subplot areas are fun areas. I, I would agree. I think that's just... Uh, that's some kind of the more classic RPG dungeon delving, uh, no pun intended, uh, that is there if... Yeah, that's true. Want it, uh, but it's not forced on you. Yeah, the whole thing is just an optional side quest, because if you don't want to go seek out Abydos and um, well, I need to get I'm trying to get this strong here. Yeah, you don't you don't have to go to Abydos or, or the Colts or or the Stronghold, it's just there if you want it. But it's really interesting to explore. Yeah. Oh, uh, so just. Uh... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to point out the two strongholds are about the toughest place in the game, just because they're such tough uh, characters. Oh, yeah, definitely.
have like uh, wishes, and uh, I think one if one of them has uh, the the second one has uh, a demon or maybe more than one. I don't remember. Uh, quite a few actually. So this one has ah. a lich. And the other one has yeah four demons. He's right. Boy, he's going to town attacking this ghost. Yeah, I... I didn't really have a character built up that I wanted to explore here, so I thought, well, a ghost is a good way to show it. In a moment, the fear will wear off. And what does a ghost have to be afraid of? Yeah, I know, I was just saying, that's pretty uh, good work that he's able to make the ghost be so fearful. And I, I, remember what... oh. I don't think a ghost can be paralyzed. I'm pretty sure that uh, they can still move. I remember one time my uh, party broke out into uh, fratricidal conflict after I accidentally attacked a chicken or something like that. And uh, Timon cast, uh, uh, he put himself to sleep, uh, which I thought was an interesting way of escaping his moral dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making headway with this lich. Okay, now I'm just hungry. There we go. I just want to go downstairs. Now, of course, Savonet and Igne are off there fighting someone. Eventually, it times out and lets me move on. Yes, yeah, so there's another lich over there. Uh, there's another lich down that hallway, I think. Or Is that a golem as well? Yeah, there's a golem, and there's also um, there's a couple unreachable areas here that they can be reached with save file hacking. Uh, where's the room that has the, the ring? The crystal ball is off in the side there. There's a demon there. I thought there was a ring in the chest here. Oh, what's up with the doors over there? They're not masking properly. I don't think I'm going to be able to grab the ring because I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I might have forgotten where it is. BW might remember, or anyone in the chat. Well, I looked in the coffer, but I didn't see it in the coffer. Am I just being blind? Oh, I am being blind. I, I'm wearing the ring. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that I had been here before with this character. Uh, oh, unfortunately, I don't have um, the Grimoire. Mm -hmm. And this is why we save our, our scroll of death strike. Oh, it's beyond me. Never mind. Well, I can't show the second stronghold like I thought. But anyways, I was just going to show those are um, really tough areas, and you can go there and fight uh, for a lot of experience. And also that very rich side quest. All right, let's just go ahead and finish out the game. We're about 10.30 here. So I need to learn alchemy, and then I'm going to go talk to Cherax and purify the Colma. I'll just wait one hour. So, um, one of the most intriguing, like, unfinished or bugged things that hasn't been fixed yet is runic magic. Has anybody ever gotten runic magic to work? I don't believe so. You can plant runes, but I don't know that they 
trigger correctly. I, I can't... Oops, that is not what I want to do. I can't recall having an instance where it does work. Will Strip be eating? She might be. I can't remember. I guess only the students eat in the study hall. So she'll be up in her... Yeah, the, uh, they have tables in their quarters, I believe, the professors. Yeah. So she'll be in one of these. There she is. Talk to you don't have the time flux book yet, right? That's true, and I also don't have the. Um... Let me just grab those things because I can't purify the gold until I do that. Actually, how much training do I have? Oh, I have twenty-two training points. How is that? Let me just build up my health to max because I think that will help me a bit in this little non-speedy run that I'm doing. Defense uh, is one of the best ways to get your hit points up. I'll put one into attack to activate my aptitude. I think I'm good on that. Mind and reflex. They're a part of the for health. stairs. What was missing there? Yeah, there's. Uh, ah. I noticed that earlier. I don't know how that happened with this file, but yeah, somehow my. Um, Fountain at LKH has gotten a missing block. Could be from switching around all the different uh, mods, right? Because this is still the the join mod. Uh, I don't want a waster, actually. I want some more magic. You don't need a whole lot of complicated spells for the um, time flux book, but uh, since this is a join mod, might as well have someone come along, right? Just for fun. The mages are actually they don't have a lot of hit points like the Prince faculty, but they are effective fighters because they use their magic. Why are they targeting me? kind of one-shotted Palacio there. And they got Tymon. Uh, I'll raise them both out of kindness. Now, uh, she'll, she should reset to her default location, which is teaching things. He should be able to join me back again. Heal himself. A really big one. 
Yeah, the giant, um... I'm saving my mystic arrows to be able to attack the one below. I think you can also attack it with the spear, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the problem with the spears is, again, they, they get stuck in things. Oh, Blaster died again, that's too bad. Okay. Schedules work when the character is uh, dead. I don't, I don't recall ever testing that. There we go, now I have the time flex book. Yeah, the adult polyp actually is quite uh, impressive. I mean, that's like the biggest uh, monster sprite in the game. Looks really scary when you first see it, but it, it actually can't hurt you, right? Yeah, they don't hurt you. I think I can just go ahead and finish. Blaster is lying dead in a cave somewhere, but, you know, sacrifices must be made. So it, what is this? This is in any percent playthrough uh, hacked and modded the whole way through? <laughs> Yeah, so they the only uh, corruption in the Corona, and they want to neutralize that. Only uh, on this playthrough, the only cheatish thing you did was recruiting Palestra, right? That's true. Yeah, and she, I guess she drew fire dead pass. for a couple turns. But... Yeah, I could go back there. Uh, she'll still be down there. I can go back and revive her. And um, she should respawn in, in pinks. Uh, I think she came back because I did two of them at once in time. Was there. Uh, there's also a delay with this quest. You have to solve the murder before you can move on to the kelp portion. That's already done. Yeah, so he um, he knows it will purify something, but he doesn't know what. And we will go ahead and just do that on the Corona, because we've been told it is um, corrupted. And that gets Omen's attention pretty fast. This is the only time, I think, that Omen uses exclamation points. The exclamation points. A lot of exclamation points, yeah. Yeah, I would like to concur with uh, Mercy453 here. Uh, we do appreciate you coming to the uh, live stream, um, Glenn. That was uh, very nice. Yeah, I'm sorry that we couldn't get the audio working. I would have loved to hear some of the, the stories and perspectives on it. Because um, we just chat about the game a lot. And as you can tell, we also have explored it down to the core. I think I'm in, uh, in the lead up to this uh, live stream, we were talking about, you know, how how quickly could we just run through the game if we wanted to show the whole thing? And then that uh, turned into a discussion about how to speed run it. And we determined that without cheating, you could speed run it in about 30 minutes. And with cheats, you could go under 20. <laughs> yeah, Buzzy, I don't see Buzzy on the chat, but Buzzy is the speed run master. He definitely has um, proven that with a lot of records. But yeah, anyways, that's the game. Uh, we kind of just showed an overview and a few different snippets of it, but in terms of core quests, that is basically it. I do like this ending a lot. Um, you just awaken back in your bed and you don't know if it was a dream. But a magpie calls twice, and of course magpie is the name that... Um, Bahudin goes by as the jester for our Oh, there's Buzzy. Yeah. Octomom. Yeah. Buzzy is our um, resident speedrun master. Um, but yeah, it's um, 
a lot of fun. That is um, kind of, I guess, a two and a half hour run through of different things about Sathira. Um, yeah, one of the things I was curious about was the difficulty level. I was trying to um, get the difficulty level to set. What I found is that the difficulty level is supposed to affect the number of training points you get each level. But um, it, it doesn't seem to be wired up on the engine side, because even though you can actually set it on the script side with Alaric, uh, the, the difficulty never changes from zero, which is the very easy setting. It always but, always prints out as, as none, right, when you print the global? Yeah, I, I always get none. And I think at the very hard setting, you're supposed to be getting only two training per level, and at the very easy, it's six. But it is true that you... With a level cap of 11, uh, you do need, I guess, um, a lot of training points per level. So maybe that was why it was decided to forgo the difficulty. But yeah, it was interesting. But that and the Tree of Life are the two most interesting um, things about Sathira that, that kind of remain as a lot of fun to speculate and discuss. But yeah, we have had no end of fun with it. So. Um, yeah, thank you so much for everybody who who joined. Um, you know, I do. I have more. Okay, Celix is asking me a question about the save file. Let me check something really quickly because I probably do. Well, if you uh, if you have do you have Redelve? Because if so. You can just uh, doors or ladders anywhere to take you to Tree of Life. Yeah. Celix has a save file that I can just drop in here too. I'm going to see if I can do that. Just for the ease of it. This is where Sheep Shaper is kind of like an application wrapper for me. You have to restart it every time you're going to relaunch the game. I have a, another question that uh, Glenn might be able to shed some light on. Um, in the uh, original uh, Sithra terms, uh, it only says that we can redistribute the unmodified uh, and complete game. Um, does that extend to changing it into modern archive formats? Like, can we take it out of the installer vice format and put it into some modern archive format? Because that would actually be really, uh, that would potentially free up the game from having to be in an emulated classic Mac environment down the road. Yeah, here's the, um, the current state of the Tree of Life zone. So It's actually started, but it doesn't have a lot of the ground tiles and things uh, in place. But uh, you have the start of a broken bridge, and then I assume this uh, cave entrance was going to lead to a um, like an underground puzzle. And then the apples are actually uh, implemented, because the there are three apples on this tree and they uh, satiate your hunger for like the full the maximum extent so between the three of them you can go for like what is it uh, 253 hours for each one so like 800 hours of gameplay there you go suddenly feeling sated i think i can also use this to teleport to the nothing map which is just like the general placeholder map. Yeah. Oh, I got poisoned. There was some discussion, escape velocity override, about um, some of the rights reverting to the author if Ambrosia no longer actually sold the game, which at this point it no longer does. I really don't 
depends on what the contract was for the game. Oh yeah, this is um, identified as Omen. Uh, for clarifying that. Yes. I mean, according to the New York... Oh, go ahead. I do know that for the purpose of Antares, I was told that um, it was fine to... There, there's sort of a licensing issue with uh, Ares where when that was open sourced, files, some of the components of the data file could not be uh, released in a free format. And I was told then by Zoom said so in consultation with um, Andrew because this was arranged back when Ambrosia was still active, uh, that it was okay to redistribute the uh, maybe not quite the same, but at least uh, at this point, I'm sure that Andrew doesn't care enough to do anything about it, right? Right, I mean, probably not. I, I'm not too uh, too nervous about it, but I have to say that the installer vice format is really deliberately um, obscure. If we if we had the game outside of the installer vice format, I actually ported um, Delve, uh, the library that uh, Del uh, Del uh, Delver Engine library for Python, uh, to um, JavaScript. Uh, partially, I didn't finish it, but my idea was that we could potentially do an engine emulation uh, in the browser someday. Uh, uh, but I just kind of stymied by that licensing issue about whether or not it would ever be okay to redistribute the data file. But I mean, for practical purposes, I don't know if anyone um, minds at this point. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, so far, Andrew hasn't expressed a lot of interest on the um, Ambrosia side. He's He's definitely moved on to his new Oh, he does a lot of work with NY Studio. Uh, what is it? Uh, 103 or something like that. It's a, a contract development place that he runs now. So he's been a lot more interested in that, I think. But there's been discussion uh, from different people involved in different projects about what's become of those rights. Peter Cartwright is a good example of someone who recently was uh, pretty curious about seeing if he could get the EVO scenario uh, out there again in some form. Thankfully, we do have the emulators, so I mean, you can go back and run Sathira as it was, but it would be uh, incredible, a lot of fun, to have some modern variant of it. I feel like uh, with the emulator, it's just such a high barrier to entry to uh, have people set up an emulator. I mean, it's getting to be to the point where people won't even install things on their computer, you know, so an emulator is like a order of magnitude greater complexity yeah. it works well for technical people like us but we're you know here going on about non-consecutive bit fields and and things like that check right, yeah, i just want to make a note check out this um the ambient stereo sound we forgot to mention that we talked about the music but um the engine does handle like dynamic sound as well and this will pan and then fade I just wanted to make a note of that. It's, it's really entertaining to listen to. But yeah, you're right. To the general public, emulators are, are quite a barrier. And that has been the benefit of things like GOG, the grand old games, because they present um, such an opportunity for people who are not interested at all in the technical aspects to be able just to download and run the games. Unfortunately, right, Dog has right. never provided uh, anything like that for the Macintosh side, and the, the main issue is Apple's own distribution licenses, right? Because Apple won't let you distribute a ROM, and then they won't let you distribute their operating system. 
Now Qmu has tried to get around that to an extent by using an, an open BIOS uh, implementation of the ROM, but they still have the OS issue. So until something like that is resolved, there, yeah, there is no way to more easily uh, distribute Mac emulators. Uh, so the comment about uh, whether or not the game's appearance uh, would be too much of a barrier nowadays. Um, I mean, I think that's a valid concern, certainly. But I mean, look at Undertale. It's uh, much cruder looking than Cythera. So, and it's been a spectacularly successful indie game. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, Retro is in, but it depends. Very much yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess I mean, uh, this th this community is is probably the most biased um, sample pool that you can get. Everybody who's in the Sethera community, but certainly there would be an audience out there. Still playing after twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still playing and still discovering new things. So. Also, the question too of whether or not uh, you'd be expecting to make much money. For from it. I mean, lots of people have done retro game uh, recreations more motivated by uh, nostalgia, I think. Um, but it would definitely be nice if it could be something that, uh, you know, people would actually be willing to pay for. But even if they aren't, it would be a, an interesting project. Yeah, no, that is true. Well, we are um, kind of wrapping up on the uh, three-hour mark. This is basically at this point. Um, please forgive the early technical challenges. We had a little bit of a stuttery start, I know. But I hope we showed a lot of the stuff that um, some of the people who aren't familiar with Sathira enjoyed when they tuned in. And for everybody who does know Sathira, the community, hopefully they got something out of it. And uh, yes, I do have to thank uh, Glenn Andres again for showing up because it was uh, yes. really entertaining to hear some of your insights. Uh, and anybody who thinks they might be interested in it, it is 100% worth the effort to get it up so that you can read all that text we skipped through because that's uh, really where a lot of the fun of the game is, is piecing things together from that uh, text and dialogue. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, we kind of made a, a choice here of what to show and what to to cut and we didn't spend as much time on dialogue but if you do play the game a little bit the best thing to do is just kind of explore the world a little bit what i was doing at the end there you can just walk around and talk with people and everybody has their own story their own life their own schedule uh it's it is like a miniature world it's like a simulated world sitting inside the computer and that is part of its allure i would say definitely i mean when you consider the um the tools at the time, compared to what we have today, you you could argue that you could build fancier editors and things that would make it a lot easier. But given the tools at the time, uh, there's no doubt that it's a, a huge technical feat. So uh, certainly all of us appreciate it for that. Yeah, so uh, it's... Uh... Thank you for inviting me to uh, to be on this stream as well. Um, I'm sorry I was about 13 years too late with my Cythera editor, that, uh, <laughs> but uh, better late than never, right? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's still, still something that the community enjoys, and it's excellent fodder for discussion, so. Yeah, I think that uh, everybody will join you uh, patches, like the first patch that I didn't make in the wild that I've seen. Yeah, it's pretty entertaining. Great. Well, unless anyone else has anything to add, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the live stream. There, I guess there's still a little bit of discussion um, going yeah. on in the chat, which which can continue, uh, as far as I know. But um, yeah, thank you for um, thank you for stopping by, everybody, especially Glenn Andres and. Um, Doing most of the talking. I guess here's another, uh, or here's to another, what, 20 years? At where do we want to be in 20 <laughs> years? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky question to answer. But 
I do know that this game has an element that will endure. That's certainly true. And I'll just make a note, this is probably beneficial for Glenn Andres to hear too, is that uh, the, this community of fans is such a talented and dedicated group. We have met and become friends in real life as well. And I mean, we all met each other through what this What to call game. each other when we uh, meet in person, it, that be, gets, gets a little difficult. Yeah, it's entertaining because when you know a person only through the computer, how do you interact with them face to face? But yeah, this game was something that brought a lot of people together. So I think that it has an enduring community that will be around in 20 years, even if, you know, no one wants to do a 40 year live stream. But <laughs> we'll always have the 20. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much, everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off and stop the stream. So have a good night. All right. Good night.